three, two, one. Welcome to the System and Soul podcast, a place for founders and entrepreneurs to discover breakthrough in their business. I'm Benj Miller, fellow founder, business coach, and your host. This is your place to gain clarity and control as you lead through the challenges you face every day in your business. Running a business is just hard, so we're bringing you the conversations with people who are figuring it out, have figured it out, to help you find breakthrough. Welcome to the System and Soul podcast. System and Soul, welcome back. We got a super fun one for you today. Been looking forward to this. Um, I don't know that we've ever had a hype guy as big as our guest today. Been following him for a long time. I'm a fan. Um, he's author of a, a couple books, Fans First, Find Your Yellow Tux. Uh, he is the owner of the Savannah Bananas and now star of Banana Land, streaming on ESPN+. Plus. Such a cool story. Jesse Cole, welcome to the show. We have fired up to be with you, my friend. Uh, Jesse, I, I would imagine most people know you. Um, you know, when you say the guy in the yellow tux, there's not a whole lot of people that come to mind. Um, but well, well, Curious George, the man in the yellow hat, there's one. That's true. That's true. I grew up with Curious George. That was my dad's favorite. So there's a lot of nostalgia in that one. But you're taking it to another level. But tell us something we don't know about you can't know can't go google <laughs> oh geez you know I, i'm a very simple uh, uh simple person um yeah people now know that i, I think now unfortunately now they know that our, my wife and i are foster parents so uh we're big into that so we have two foster kids we're gonna be starting a nonprofit, profit bananas foster so that's now starting to get out there let's go back let me see all right i i'm a diehard actually dave matthews band fan and i was in a dave matthews music video a close-up of me in a Dave Matthews music video, but they had to take me out because it made me ineligible to play in the NCAA baseball because back in the days I was yeah. so I was in it. So that's a fun fact. Not many people know about me uh, that I was a, a fan and I got to be in a music video for Dave Matthews. Yeah, and uh, nowadays you would have gotten paid big bucks for it. I probably would have had the NIL. I know, boy, the world right. has changed uh, 15, 20 years. Uh, it's amazing, but uh, yeah, now it's, uh, <laughs> I'm glad I got to have that opportunity back in the day and I've learned a lot. It's, that's super fun. Tell me about Bananas Foster. What What's the purpose of the nonprofit? Well, so my dream was always everything uh, with the bananas was to make baseball fun. So seven years ago, my wife and I sleeping on an air bed. We had to sell our house. We went to $1.8 million in debt. We were struggling, but she dropped everything. We sold our house. She came down. She's like, I'm supporting you in this dream. And fortunately, we were able to make baseball fun and spread it all over the country. And she started just at that same time reading and learning about just the challenges in foster care in the United States, particularly 500,000 kids in the U.S. that don't have a permanent home. And she just kept listening and reading and sharing with me. And she's like, we got to do something. So during COVID, in the middle of all the chaos, we said, well, we're just going to get a license. We're just going to go do it. And so we had an amazing uh, two and a half year old girl join us uh, right in January of 2021. And then we had another baby, six days, join us, six days old, joined us after a six days struggle in the NICU with some drug challenges uh, about a year and a half ago. And as we're learning this and be, they're kind of part, we're just seeing that it's not talked about. It's talked about negatively. People don't understand the foster care world. And, um, you know, especially if we're reading people, every single city has such a need, literally yeah. they need 50 families, 100 families. And so, you know, we're meeting families that are taking on eight kids, nine kids, just to keep them to going miles and miles away to try to find a home and so we said well what if we developed a way to attract more foster families by celebrating them by honoring them by welcoming them to all these places we play from all over the country and and educating in a fun way and so yeah we're going to launch it this year and so when we go to all these cities all over the country we're going to welcome and honor the foster families in that city on the field in front of sold out crowds get the whole family including the kids before the game to have a vib experience very important banana and really try to celebrate it because we believe in, we believe in whale done. You know, uh, it's, it's, you know, you, at SeaWorld, the way they honor the whales they are the way they actually get the whales to, uh, tra you know, perform is that they celebrate them when they do things well. And when they don't do things well, they just ignore it. I think so often we focus on all the bad. We're going to yeah. focus on all the good and hopefully attract more. So thank you for letting me. Yeah. So much gold in that. I'm excited for you. Uh, most of my friends, it's kind of ironic, but most of my friends have foster or adopted kids and, really? um, yeah, yeah. Um, 
And so it is a big part of our, our life here. And I, but I love, I want to call out, I love how you were able to intersect both what you do, what you're passionate about and this mission oriented way that you could go redeem some small part of our culture. Um, big fan of redemptive commerce, um, re redemptive capitalism, right? And that's, <laughs> that's what you're, you're going after. It's unique that you brought that together there because the reality is, you know, what we did with Savannah with a ballpark that was abandoned, what we did in our first team in a Gastonia, that ballpark was abandoned. What we do in everything is we look for opportunities and we don't see things as they are. We see yeah. things as they can be. Yeah. And the fact that what we do is we bring people together with the bananas, you know, half a million people, a million people a year. And now if we can do that in the foster world, uh, there's a great opportunity for synergy and to really bring some together. So thank you for yeah. All right. So uh, the the premise of the show is the top three things that are on your mind. But I, I've got a burning question I have to ask first because <laughs> when you talked, when you told that story, you talk about being, you know, massively in debt, not sure what's next. You know, I, those those moments are hard. And for me, I tend to get that, that that's a trigger for me to move into a scarcity mindset. And from the outside looking in, everything that you do has just this abundance mentality of we're going to keep giving and trust that the universe gives back, you know, that it pays off. And, and so everything is over the top, every, but that costs investment. It costs time, planning, energy, dollars, all of that. How are you able to break through in that time of, of very tight constraints to keep your mind on that? Well, I learned this from my dad. People always ask, you know, what's the best advice in your life? And, you know, I've learned, I've read every single book from Walt Disney and P.T. Barnum and you know, Steve Jobs. I've read everything I could to try to learn from visionaries that think differently. But my best advice is from my dad. And, you know, two things. When he first like, came up to bat when I was five years old, my dad said, Jess, swing hard in case you hit it. And that was his advice <laughs> for coming up to bat, which is just hilarious. But he created that mindset, which I take every day. And I take big swings and I swing and miss a lot. But when we make contact, we make pretty good contact. It was when, uh, about 10 years ago, my dad was battling two forms of cancer and he was in the hospital all the time. And every day I, I would call him and I'd say, dad, how are you doing? And he would say, Jess, I'm great. How's your day? What's going on with the team? What's going on? Every day. And there was one day he said, Jess, I'm good. How are you? What's going on? What's going on? And I found out from my stepmother that night that he battled the, the chemo worse than anything I ever imagined. Like the doctors were like just blown away that he was still, uh, you know, doing what he was doing. And few months later, my dad was at, in remission and the doctors at Beth Israel Hospital said it was the most positive patient they'd ever had. You know, he had two serious forms of cancer and just knocked him out. And that mindset of literally every day, Jess, I'm great. How are you doing? And he's battling that. How can the little things, if I'm sleeping on an airbed and we have $30 to our name to grocery shop for an entire week, we still have a baseball team. We get to go to a ballpark. We get to try to deliver fun and get people to believe in this. So that mindset that I learned from my dad kind of made me, I mean, Emily look at everything like, hey, let's just bring as much abundance, positivity, and energy to what we do. And uh, on the back of our fans' first playbook, it says, be patient in what you want for yourself, but be impatient in how much you give to others. Mm -hmm. And so that has stayed with our entire team. Are we just give, 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 give. And uh, luckily, a lot has flown back to us. I, l I love that synopsis that you shared there. Um, thank you. So what are the top three things on your mind? <laughs> what are you working you know, on challenges growth areas things yeah. you're passionate about yeah i i, I love that um i i'm an obsessive and i think it, uh, obsession and people think of it in a bad way and i actually think of it in a good way and some of the greatest leaders are obsessed they're obsessed because they just i could see it as something i'm fanatic i'm fanatical so i i'm spending most of my time every day i write down 10 ideas every single morning Every day I write in my journal. Every day I'm, I'm reading, I'm running, and listening to podcasts. I, I wake up two hours before the kids do so I could do all that. Um, where I'm putting a lot of my mind and energy is looking at what the next three to five years are. As crazy as it is, we are, we've sold out our 2023 world tour already. Um, we're working on 2024. And I have this big fear of irrelevance or uh, doing the same thing or boredom of not having joy. And so I am studying passionately what went well for the Globetrotters, what didn't go well for the Globetrotters. I'm studying what went well for WWE. I'm studying Grateful Dead, Dave Matthews, the team, the, the band that, you know, were the highest grossing acts because they had fans just coming in no matter what with no number one singles. They were different than everyone else. 
So I am looking at that, and that's where I'm spending so much of my focus from a business standpoint is looking at the next three to five years. How do we do something to stay even more relevant uh, and not just kind of, hey, they're a show, they're entertainment. I want to be something much bigger. than that. That's awesome. Um, I saw you're talking about selling out your, your uh, season. I saw that you just turned down a, a big all-cash offer for a lot of tickets in the future. Um, but I loved reading about it in your heart behind it was like, no, that's not why we do this. And yeah. like we, we can sell those tickets and we can sell them for less than these resellers. Like there's no reason to siphon off a piece of the revenue for these big corporations. Um, uh, when we, when we're here about serving and getting people in as cheap as they can, so they can come enjoy and, and be blessed. So I, I really, I appreciated that. Uh, it's back to that redemptive capitalism. Like, you, I'm not saying don't make money, right? But there's there's a way that we do it that is redemptive. Um, well, so I have a lot of your things. The money, the focus is the money, the focus. And so you know, Walt Disney inspired me. And so as she said, money doesn't excite me. My ideas excite me. Yeah, I get so much more. But I could care less. I have no idea what's in our bank account. I may be the only <laughs> owner in the sports. Team. I literally have no idea. Our president says we're doing fine. Our CFO says we're doing fine. I'm sure we're doing fine. But the reality is, it's like that's not the end of your days. When you're in your, you're, you're saying goodbye to everyone. No one's going to say, "Oh man, how much he had in this bank account." They're yeah. going to talk about the memories, the moments, and the experiences. I want to maximize those. So yes, when a ticket broker comes to us and say, "Hey, we're going, we want to buy a huge amount of group tickets for every single game. This is a million dollar order. We're going to pay you double of what your tickets are and give you a half million in profit." Not one second did I even think, "Oh wow, this is a great decision," because the name of our company is Fans First. We do things for our fans. We want our fans to get the best experience. I don't care about an extra $500,000. What does that mean? I would just pump it back into our fans anyways. So it's just every decision. I mean, at our games, so we have no ticket fees, no convenient fees, no service fees. We pay your taxes. People don't realize that. Like literally on your tickets, your food, your merchandise, a $30 shirt is a $30 shirt. There's no shipping fees. There's no taxes. We pay all that. And no one even notices. But it's just, I want to keep it fans first. And so yeah. it's very easy to make decisions when you know who you are and what you stand for. And I think a lot of companies, a lot of leaders are still trying to work and figure that out. Yeah. I, I, it feels like something often, and that's what I help organizations do, is help be able to articulate those things and really breathe them into the whole culture, make them true. It feels like something that's just under the surface, just on the tip of the tongue, but it's really hard for most people to articulate and get a clear vision around it that they can rally other people around. So you've done that amazingly well. Uh, well, I mean, like, for you, for the people that you've worked with out of curiosity, like what I've started to see is that I just follow my energy. So to figure out who I am, what I stand for, I follow what gives me energy, what fires me up at the end of the day, where I am exhausted. Like that energy helps drive a lot of my decisions and also the clarity of vision. Have you seen that? Oh, absolutely. So that's one of the things that I watch for as I'm facilitating the room of, of senior leaders. If, if you're paying attention, you can watch their energy go up when they talk about certain things, when they get into the, like, well, this is the logical reason that we do this. And they're like, you know, pretty monotone and very intelligent. And then all of a sudden they get on a rant about this. You're like, that's what it's about for you. You hit, you hit a nerve. And yeah. it, that's why I mean, it was like, Jesse, that's so much energy. I'm like, well, I do what gives me energy. It's not rocket science. Like I'm not doing financials and operations and all those things that wear me out. I am doing the things that I enjoy and I love and that gives me energy. So it's just, it's such an interesting thing. When you look at that, you, you do an energy audit on your own schedule. For your sure. schedule. How many things are you doing that give you energy? If you do more of those every single day, things are going to start taking care of themselves. Hey listener, I wanted to take a second in the middle of this episode to take a time out and tell you about one of our partners. The key to running a successful organization is having a bench of leaders you can rely on, but building leaders can be daunting and costly. There's not enough time in the day for you to mentor every person on your team and it takes a lot of effort to gather resources and measure leadership growth in your people. That's why WildSpark created a scalable leadership development system to grow your people in a consistent way. Each month, your people will hop online, learn essential leadership skills tailored to your organization's goals. Then your team will meet together and discuss practical application. It's a turnkey leadership development system that's scalable, sustainable, and strategic. Your people are the key to your success. 
invest in their growth with WildSpark. Learn more at wildspark.com. That's W-I-L-D-S-P-A-R-Q.com. That's wildspark with a Q.com. So I'm curious because you're such a unique leader, how do you prioritize your day calendar? Like what, where you're going to put your energy and where you're just going to say, Hey, somebody else has that. And I'm not going to pay any attention. It was tough in the beginning, man. I, what is me and Emily, or I just running a team in the beginning and we had a couple of, you know, 22 year old interns right out of college and a 24 year old president. I had my hands in everything. So did Emily. I mean, we were just, we had no money. We had nothing. We were trying to figure it all out. And I was exhausted at the end of the days. And so now when I prioritize, I know what my um, greatest strengths are. It's my energy list is, is anything that I'm doing that's creating, sharing, or growing. So creating, coming up with ideas, promotions, video ideas, things we can do on a baseball field that's never been done before, new characters, new show ideas, all of that. that I mean, the things we're working on with skydiving and riding bowls and exploding balls. I mean, these things we're working on are just fascinating to me. So that fires me up. Uh, sharing. Uh, getting in front of our team. I love talking to our team, telling stories. You know, you have so many role models and leaders, but do they have stories that they can back up that share who they are? Uh, and so sharing with you on a podcast, yeah. sharing on a stage, yeah. which I just was the other day, that, and then growing. You know, I've got hundreds of books around me and podcasts and just walking around and learning and listening and reading and writing down ideas from that. You know, your input affects your output. So then yeah. those areas, uh, if I'm doing that, so I prioritize my schedule, what are those I'm doing? Or am I talking to, uh, you know, creative people, uh, you know, we're working on major league stadiums for 2024. So I think I have two calls later this afternoon with major league teams that fires me up because that's creating something that's never happened before for the bananas or for baseball, because we got some pretty big ideas that yeah. fits my energy list. So that's where I prioritize. Are you going to actually get to play them or play at their stadium? I will see. <laughs> okay. All right. TVD, we'll, come back. We'll see. I think there's a few ideas in the mix. I mean, I know it's going to be a challenge uh, to play them, but we'll yeah, see. that'd be, yeah. Maybe spring training or something. Yeah, maybe spring training. Yeah, there, there, there's options there. So we'll see what happens. <laughs> that's that's super fun. What are your um, top three, top two? What are your top podcasts right now that you're feeding your mind? Good. Oh, good question. Uh, you know, I've always been a great fan of uh, my friend Ryan Hawk and Learning Leader. Uh, he's just a great, uh, over 500 plus interviews. Uh, he's outstanding. But um, two that I've really got into deep now are uh, Founders and Acquired. And it's, it's outstanding because it looks at some of the most brilliant founders and it tells their whole story and gives real examples. So the guy will read the, by all the biographies and then talk about the biggest business pieces of learned and then acquired uh, just fascinating, just the in-depth. I, I learn I'm a parallel thinker. So you, there's a lots of business books that kind of just share theories and thoughts, but I like going very deep on a subject or a company and, and just learn, like I read in and out burgers story. And then I listened to him on, uh, on founders and I was like, Ooh, these are the five things for Aiden Elmberger that are brilliant that I want to take and, and build into our company. Yeah. Yeah. It, there, there are certain in and outs fascinating to me. I'm, I'm, you just brought that up. I was just out in California and of course we had to stop and get some in and out burger, but even that idea that because we were in California, we had to stop and get in and out burger. Like that's, that's something to a brand. And, uh, we had, we had some teenagers there that had never been. And so they had, yeah. they had to try this and why, like, I mean, at the end of the day, it, it was a very good hamburger, but it's a hamburger and fries, you know, like, yeah. so like, it's gotta be, what is the extra? What is the thing? And, and it was, they did a good well, job. Well, there's a the way to find out how a company is special. Look at all the things they don't do that everyone else does. So oh, give me, that's so good. So look at all the things they don't do. So what they do, they don't need freezers. They don't need microwaves. All their burgers are fresh. They don't have heat lamps. Okay. Their, their potatoes are special potatoes. They have lettuce. They only have four main things on their menu. They haven't added Mediterranean wraps and all these other things. Right. Share podcast. Right. So look at all the things they don't do. Like for us, we don't have sponsorship. We don't have ticket fees. We don't have convenient fees. We have one type of ticket. You know, there's, I could keep going at all the things. Yeah. We don't play the regular baseball game. We play banana ball game. We don't have, you know, all these things. We keep going. We don't have a regular first base coach. We have a break dancing first base coach. We don't have a regular umpire. We have a, a twerking umpire. We don't have a dance team. We have a senior citizen dance team. Like, we, all those things you look at, look at what you don't do, and then that's how you differentiate yourself. And, and In-N-Out Burger has really differentiated by their simplicity of their model yeah. and that what they do. Do you have a hypothesis on why it, you've proven, it, it feels proven fact that standing out 
is the way to stand out, right? <laughs> like, don't stop trying to fit in, stop trying to be like everybody else. You, you've you've proven that, and people have proven that over and over again. But yet, people still gravitate kind of toward the known, the safe. Do you know why that is? It's hard. It's painful. It's uncomfortable. It's all those things that when, as a kid, we try to run away from. Mm. And it's all things as parents, we try to help our kids not feel that way. So you think about it. The first time I put on this yellow tuxedo and at a game, do you think the looks and the laughter and the ridicule and the criticism, what if an owner doesn't dress like this? I remember going to my first speech and it was right. I was going to pick up right there for him or right to the speech. I wore this for the airport. The looks that I got and TSA had to pre-check. I mean, the TSA had to check. It was like, like I would dress like this if I was going to do something crazy. But um, the, the reality is uncomfortable. It's uncomfortable. You know, I watched, I would, you know, watch my son, you know, at a trampoline park for the first time, scared out of his mind and trying to swim for the first time. We're always uncomfortable at first. And a lot of people, they'd rather have the comfort. And so when you think about that standing out, when you go to a networking function or a business function, everyone's dressed pretty safe because you don't yep. want to feel like you don't belong. Right. You want the feeling of belonging. However, what I try to do is create something a little different that creates an even a bigger feeling of belonging. At our games, you'll have two-year-olds, you'll have 82-year-olds, every single background, diversity, you name it. We come together and everyone is dancing. At a Nimbo baseball game, we have we have thousands of people doing a hey baby dance in the middle of the game. And I'm looking around, I'm like, there's nowhere else in the world this is happening. You don't feel like you belong if you're not doing that. It's, yeah. it's bringing all these unique people, characters, our baseball team, a lot of misfits, people that weren't selected and weren't playing for, you bring right. them together and celebrate them. So I think when you stand out as yourself, you can actually attract like-minded people that will make you feel even more belonging and togetherness. And I think that's what you just have to get over that initial fear. And it's so tough for people. And I had it and I still struggle with it uh, on a daily basis. Yeah. Are you, are you familiar with, uh, Victor, uh, what's his name? Yeah. Franco, yeah. Play and search for meeting. Yep. Uh, no, 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 no. Oh, that guy's awesome. But, um, James well, you Victoria, hey, Victor, it usually goes yeah. into, no, James Victoria, fact perfection. You would love this book. Um, I'm... I'll get, I'll, I'll send you one of these after I've got a whole yeah, shelf of them. Give away. Of. I would love to, I'd love, uh, to, I'd love to see that. but man, it's, it's, it's a, it's a poetic view of exactly what you're talking about. And like, the world needs you. You were made unique. The world's got everybody else. Um, I, the, the insight I heard in what you said was it's less about finding belonging and more about creating belonging. And I would love that for you. Attract. Yeah. Attract. I think everyone has like, how do you hire so many people? Or how do you like, what's going on here? You know, people strung up. We have 3000 plus people on our wait list to work with us. And it's not because we're recruiting. It's because we're saying how different we are, how unique we're attracting. Belonging is often just being who you are and attracting like-minded people. And I think yeah. that's, if you're hiding behind who you are, you're just only holding yourself back from feeling even closer and more together with others. That is the message of system and soul right there. So thank you for that. We'll <laughs> use that audio clip. Jesse Cole says so. Um, what else? What else is on your mind? Oh, geez. I mean, it's uh, for us, it's, it's very simple. It's, uh, it's, it's family and bananas and they usually marry together. And so we started talking about the foster care and, and now it's my wife and I, we are playing this unbelievable juggling game of how to have three kids, two foster kids and play 33 cities and travel the country while I'm speaking, while I'm doing this. And we have no idea how to do it. And I always believe you gotta get through the messy to get to the great. Um, but we take that positive mindset. It's like, hey, everything figured out. Might as well, might as well be us. And so, yeah. yes, that's daily. We're trying to figure out how to optimize our life, which is best for our kids, best for our family, and best for our business. And uh, it's a challenge uh, on a daily basis. And I owe so much gratitude towards my wife because she focuses so much on it where I can do the things that give me energy almost on a daily basis. That's that's awesome. Um, you're an inspiration. I, I so appreciate you hanging out. I, it was it was quick but there's so much gold in here i want to listen to it a few times we got a few more minutes if you want to keep jamming my friend well here's so so the, one of the things that you actually spoke to one of my biggest questions is what's where does your energy come from so you said you got that question a lot and, and it's do what gives you energy how did it how what was talk through the process of figuring that out because you named three concise things. And I can, I can see you as a leader showing up for work and five people ask you for things. And if, and if it doesn't check those boxes, then the answer is no, like that makes perfect sense. But 
the process to get there. Any advice for somebody that needs needs that level of clarity? Yeah, I mean, I remember vividly with our first team in Gaston, North Carolina. We finished the season, had another record breaking season, attendance, revenue, all that stuff. And it was like, all right, here we go again. Start selling sponsorship. And I had to get back on the phone selling sponsorship. And I was like, I have no excitement for that. It was that aha moment. I was like, yes, I can go and get them all excited about another coming season. But no, I, I want to just create the greatest show and create something that I love. I don't want to do that. And so at that moment, it was like, all right, well, let's reimagine this. Do we need to sell sponsorship? You know, can we have someone else that really enjoys the meeting interaction like this and doesn't, you know, and so I started just trying to fig figure out my life. Is it, you know, eliminating, delegating, and yeah. really focusing on those things that I truly love. So, you know, I, I think it, it, it just takes that time to do that audit, to take a step back. We're so in the go, 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 go. We look at our days, we have four or five meetings and I'm, I'm guilty of it often, but I make sure I have white space that I can actually think and reflect. And I think we need to take a step back. And at the end of the day, you're coming home to your kids, your family, your spouse, and you're tired and you need a drink because it was such a wild day. We're doing it backwards. At five o'clock, my goal is to have the most energy I had to be my best for my kids, the best for my family. But that's on you on how you set your schedule and how you set your day. And are you doing those things and even getting rid of those things that are good? So the way to do it is maybe do some side bets. Try some things other that you don't normally do and say, does it fire you up? Like try this new thing you haven't done before, but you're like, you know what? I'm excited for this. If there's things on your schedule that you are procrastinating, that's a sign you should not be doing. It. Yeah. Yeah. Those, those are things that are great. About. That's good. Well, no, I, I hesitated because the, the five things I'm procrastinating on that have been on my list for a couple of weeks, I'm like, yeah, you're right. I should not be doing those. Delegate them or eliminate them. You know, if, if you're really procrastinating, it's like that, well, you're not going to bring a ton of energy and ton of passion and ton of fun to it. You know, that's right. The reason why we, we perform well is because we have so much fun doing what we do. When you watch the videos of the bananas dancing and all the craziness that we're like, we're having fun and we perform better when we have fun. If yeah. You're procrastinating something. You're probably not going to bring that joy that you need to bring it. Yeah. One of my companies has a, a daily stand up and I join when I can. And this morning I got on there and we play this game called Music League on Slack, which is this crazy competition. And it's so competitive. Just there's a there's a category and everybody picks a song and there's a playlist and then you vote and you have a certain number of points. It gets super heated and competitive. But uh, uh, I Will Always Love You by Whitney Houston won the best cover last week. So we get on this call and somebody plays it like as people are coming in and and the, everybody ended up like lip syncing it was just this glorious moment and it set the mood you can feel it the energy on slack you know we're virtual so on slack the rest of the day you can feel the energy from that moment so totally get that so good totally get that uh jesse i'm gonna send you this book um but thank you for hanging out with us um, awesome to get to know you a little bit be inspired by you a lot of wisdom packed in there uh, if you haven't joined a game, um, you, you've got to get out, find a way, find an excuse to get to Savannah. Uh, if you want a sneak peek, like I mentioned, uh, ESPN plus has an original on banana land. So you can, you can see all the inside craziness that we've been referring to. But Jesse, any parting words, wisdom no. for us? Oh, geez, man. We had fun. Thank you so much. That was very thoughtful questions and a lot of fun. I appreciate you. Wonderful. All right. Thanks, man.